surprisingly, it is a kind of a character among the French nations. I'm sorry, but uh, 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 any, I'll hit you on that. It is what the French nations are doing. That the English have somehow positioned themselves on the continent of Africa. Now you don't see any of an English country that has an occupation of rebels in the bush. You don't see that much. When it existed in Kaguta time, that was uh, Museveni in the uh, in the Katanga region of uh, Uganda, Congo, Tanzania, and all that. Up to now, you can say Uganda is calm. Kenya, they have uprising because of Al Shabaab. It's a different story altogether. Then when you go to Tanzania, zero. Zambia, zero. Zimbabwe, there is nothing. Botswana, there is nothing. You go then, you can check all the English countries on the continent. But when you come to the French, uh, French countries on the continent, that is where we have the problem. Congo is so not safe. They also have people with guns and then also in the bush. When you go to Rwanda, it is calm. Burundi is not calm. Cameroon, your country, my country, Cameroon is also uh, a sign affair. It's also another issue. You understand? When you go to Niger, there are people still holding guns. Burkina Faso, there are people still holding guns. Cote d'Ivoire, it's somewhere also in a, uh, they live in a glass house, but they are throwing stones. So you ask, why is with the French countries on the continent, not even excluding the, 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 the North Americans, the North African countries, I beg your pardon. Tunisia have rebels to some extent. Algeria has rebels in the, in the, in, 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 the, in the southern part. And then also the Sahara, we, that is the Western Sahara, except Morocco, Libya is in flames. Egypt also have uh, uh, people holding arms. So you don't even understand. You take Egypt, which is the English in the north, all the French in the west, all the French, and you take Libya out, all the French, they are also having not a peaceful time. And then also uh, the, 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 the potency, the potential of being uh, uh, also exposed or they are exposed to this kind of coup d'etat, this kind of uh, vigilantism, this kind of rebellion, and then terrorism and then arms, you know, demonstrations, civil war, civil unrest, and then I just don't understand. But Mali's issue is a peculiar and a special issue on the West African belt because West Africa, you can call it Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Ghana had a time of revolution, but that was way back in the before 80s, that is in the 70s and then early 80s. With not, Nigeria in the 80s, they ended up occupation. Sierra Leone, in the 90s, they've never gone on war. Gambia, somehow, they had a long, one who called it a detector, but pretty calm, they don't have any problems. But Guinea is so, you saw recently they were also on the edge. Anytime Guinea is shaking, Mali is also shaking. Several country among the, the French is only Senegal. And one wonders why our brothers and sisters in Mali, such a beautiful country. Now they deprived the world from coming. The tourism, they were more or less tied to, to uh, 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 Kenya. But now tourism in Mali, it is completely, it has become a risky arena and a risky paradise that nobody can go there because you'll be kidnapped or be raped or be extorted. So unfortunately, uh, any, that is Mali. And uh, it's a little bit of uh, a surprise and very sad that we have to sit now, not to talk about prosperity of a beautiful nation, but also to remind ourselves of inconsistency and coup d'etat from the time that they got independence in 1960. Okay, I think um, that analysis has been very helpful for us to know the background, because absolutely like what you're saying, you know, when people just see a coup d'etat, there's just one focus that everybody was, the reason why it happened, but this background information of the different kind of rebels and the history of it, of course, in the, in the, before even the independence, we know Mali has produced one of the richest ever uh, uh, personality in history, the richest, Mansa Munsa. And so we begin to wonder where are this militia coming from the different parts of it. But um, what the attention today or the rebels are talking about is the influence of France. 
and which like you really said um the the issue with the french speaking countries taking starting even from our own country and now we saw even after the coup despite all the other uprisings or like uh, you said that has been happening on the continent or in these french countries but the moment something like that will happen to overthrow a long sitting president there then you see the international community start agitating what's the hidden agenda behind well let me just say that in the case of the french as you and i are aware most of the french presidents have always been one time either they were at the assembly assembly general or general assembly in france most of them were french deputies most of them were French scholars. Most of them were lecturers in France. So one would say that post-independence, French countries. And if you look at the timing when the French gave all her colonies on the African continent independence, West Africa, in a very peculiar, they gave them independence one month after the another. Some of the countries two weeks after the another. All 1960, 1960, some February, some August, some July, some June, that is what they did all over and went to Central Africa, did the same thing, and then before they left. So after they had gone back to sit in Paris, as you and I are aware, that French still have interest in some of the French countries. And then indeed, their, their governments, I'm talking about the presidents and the governments, any government of the French, that wants in a French country in Africa, that wants to be in the good books of the West, or that wants to live on power, stay on power, sustain power, all what they do is that they do what is called a shall surrender. They just go into Paris and then they bow down to Paris that here we are, you are my, our masters, continue. As I've said on some of the programs before, that when the African Union was formed, and even the ECOWAS, when the French countries joined the ECOWAS and the African Union also, none of them attended a summit without going to Paris to take instructions. So post-independent French countries, the people the French gave the independence to, is not different from the English somehow, but we have managed our own a little bit better. The French countries and the governments and the presidents, all of them, name them, Abdi Diouf, Felix Sofé Boigny, all of them called them, they were one way or the other, were French deputies. Some were deputy ministers of Agri, some were with the uh, 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 National Assembly General, like Modi Bokita. Modi Bokita was, in, uh, was, was a Frenchman, he was a France. In France, he was a general assembly man. So if such a person was coming out, and then he changes from his masters. There is a problem. The story is not different from Gabon. Odimba, whom I personally, you know, very close somehow, I will call it Gabon. They have a problem. But his father, Ali Omar Bungu, was a French idol. So when Paul Bia is not different, how can, for instance, Paul Bia sit somewhere in Switzerland, Intercontinental Hotel, and rule Cameroon from Switzerland. And the French and the, to the West, there's no problem about that. It is because French is a superpower. French has the ears and the voice of their superpower within the region, Europe, and the international community. So if French says, I have blessed this government, and that is my baby, it is how the international community speaks, and that is the language they understand. Nobody goes out there to challenge France taking into consideration or mining that the continent of Africa was divided among was divided with the French by the French and the English the Portuguese has only five league the Spanish has only one and then two unattached three unattached Liberia Libya and Ethiopia the rest were divided between the English and French and also the Portuguese and one Spanish league finished so the French knows how to play, how to play with their colonies. And then the presidents also, with their mentality, the only way to secure your government is to only to, to, to surrender to Paris. So when you surrender to Paris, your government becomes 
Paris Metropole government. So more or less, they have the power, they have the support. And that is the, one of the reasons why in the northern of Mali, all the vigilantism and the 14, 14 active operations of Al-Qaeda rebellion, all of them are saying that the central government has given in to French for French protection. But it has been the case with Burkina Faso. It was the case with Togo till today. It was the case with Benin. It was the case of Niger. That whoever any Niger government that did not fall surrender to France was overthrown by coup d'etat. The same thing was in, uh, in Chad. The same thing was in, in Central, a lot. Central African Republic, Bongi, look at how Professor is struggling out there. It is because of some of this thing. Either you give in to Paris or Paris will support the other side against you. So it is your style and the French style of democracy or the French style of independence that they didn't leave. I remember when I had done some work in your country, Cameroon. So Cameroon Post Office, Cameroon Banks, National Air of Cam Air Cameroon and most of your state institutions were all in the hands of the French. La Côte d'Ivoire, the story is no different. The water, the water, the electricity, everything. So the post, everything was in the hands and is still in the hands of the French. So any president that comes from that background and then you decide to go against the West, I'm talking against the French. The French make sure that they instigate you and the French make sure that they... they they talk to their neighbors. They, to, they talk to the international community. You are a part of the international community, but you are not part of international decisions of the world. Mali is not part of international decisions of the world. Sierra Leone is not part of international decisions of the world. You are being made to contribute, but you don't take decisions. It's not different from Ghana. So when the West sits down and they support you, regardless of what you do, they support you. So if you ask about the question that why is it that the France and then the whole world, the international community have started speaking against the revolution? Yes, one would say that allow democratic dispensation, dispensation to grow, allow democracy. But let's look at the context between democracy, whether democracy is where somebody has stayed in power for long. But then if it is in that context, then one can also say that somebody like Angelica Merkel of mm -hmm. Germany, she has stayed on nearly 20 years and the 12. longest 12. Okay, she's going for a 20 this and the yeah. longest in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm saying, but you see, one would say that staying in power for long, I've mentioned and I'll say it again. It is not a western, it's not a button, but a usage of the power. And the usage of the presidential tenure makes Correct. you a good president or bad president. There's Correct. nothing called a long serving president because all those who are able to steer the affairs of their country, Mahathia Lee Kuan Yew, Chema Mao, and you can name many others around the world, North Korea, South Korea, and others, they were all able to stimulate and steer the affairs of the economy, giving economic freedom, liberation. But we, between you and I, an African, we preach of democracy. Nonsense. There is no democracy. If you cannot democratize your economy, but democracy is only to prepare my finger to go and vote on election day, that democracy, I call it a stupid democracy. Give me a democratic freedom. Stay in power. I don't care how long you stay in power. Long as I have job, long as education, long as the economy is good, long as there's no inflation, the long that we have health, long that there's security, how long you stay in power, it is only your wife that it affects if you're a man or your husband that it affects if you're a woman because your business shadows will not allow you to have a good time with your wife. But if I'm happy, happy, having happiness, why not? Lee Kuan Yew stayed over 27 years. He was not democratic. Putin, that story is not different. But if you ask any Russian, he will tell you that he's the best president that has ever happened to Russia. Why? Because they believe that he's giving them what they want. So I'm saying that in Africa, yes, if even you want to stay in power, stay in power, but let your people have a feel of a positive presence. It's not the short term. The four years and four years as America, as in UK, as in, that is needed, but it's needless. 
The point is that if you stay for even 60 years and the country is lifted from where to where, why? Is it different from the monarchy system of the Saudis? Is it different from the monarchy system from the Qatarians? Is it different from the, uh, from the monarchy system of the, of the Emirates? Look at Emirates and look at Africa. Look at Kuwait and look at Africa. But all these countries, including Mali, including Sierra Leone, including uh, uh, Cameroon, including Ghana, all of us are older in terms of independence than these countries in the Middle East. All of them. We all got independence ahead of them. Some even we are older than them 15 years. So look at how they brought and they brought the economic model, making their country the Western countries that colonized them and left. They go there and serve them as their masters. The English goes to Dubai and, and bow down to the, to, to the king of, uh, of the Emirates. Mm -hmm. So that is what Africa, because if even you look at the Emirates or you look at the kingdoms or you look at the Mediterranean, they are only operating and then only leveraging on one mineral resources, which is oil. Come to us, Sub-Saharan Africa, your country. Is there any country that has resources more than Cameroon? Look at your north. Gold is all over in uh, alluvial gold, all over in Cameroon. Is there any agri nation or a country that has a fertile land than Cameroon? Both south, west, north. Is there any country on Africa? Oil is in your country. Plantations, timber. Go to Gabon. They have the timber, the biggest timber in the world, still untapped. Talk about fish. Is there anything that we don't have on the continent? And talk about my own country, Ghana, is the most one of the most blessed land of all lands in the world with any resources in commercial volumes that we don't know the tail and the end and when the resources will finish. Every backyard, if even I dig my house, I'll find gold. If even you dig your house, you'll find gold. Plant even plantain in your house, you have it. So we have all this and we asking ourselves, where did we go wrong or where is the problem? Where is the, where, where is the problem? So for me, I'm saying that where some of this anger originated out of political heat, overheating the political port, some has to do also, one would say that. Yes, you've gained independent. If you believe that your independence is waste, your independence means nothing to you because you are not prepared to help your people. I would have suggested that at least our independent, our, our colonial masters, they did, they showed us how to build sports stadium. They gave us how to build, uh, play football. Then go and surrender. Give back the whole country and then decolonize. If you decolonize, then we understand that you've given him back to your colonial master to come and rule you. But if you have an independent and you still go back and then give in and they give you instructions and you come and severe your citizens, you come and severe your economy, you take your mineral resources, you take your money and give all back. You steal the money. You don't keep the money in your country. You go and give the money out them. You sign conditionalities and clauses that encrypt your own money you put there the very day you leave or you die. The property, the money, it is left with them. Is this story, the story different from what we see in, in, in Belgium? Whoever had gone to Belgium knows how Belgium and the Congolese assets from all the Congolese presidents, present and past, have done for Belgium. So if Belgium has built such a city, they don't have unemployment issue. They have a fabulous country, a neat country. All properties, beautiful homes, etc., are all my greatly from Hardwick from Congo. And go back to Kinshasa. Go back to Kinshasa. Go and look. You still have what? The shanty towns. You still have the body. Even drinking water, they don't have. Congo is still not having light. But it is the richest country, undoubtedly, on the continent of Africa. So it is nobody's making. It is our own making. Because it comes back to buttress the point, as I told you that. We don't love ourselves. It borders on love. We are racist ourselves. And I'll mention it again. Because if you are not, and if you are, you would protect your race and protect your people. Mm -hmm. If you don't protect your race and you cannot protect your people, you don't come and tell me that French is instructing you, English is instructing you. Yes, they don't have any gold in Paris on any soil anywhere. And if they have, they will tell you it will conflict with technology. 
they will not mind. America has gold in Nevada, Las Vegas, but they are not mining. They mine with a certain descent. Canada has oil more than Saudi Arabia, but it will conflict technology. They are not mining. Alaska in the United States, the Anchorage, the whole land is oil more than Saudi, more than Kuwait, more than Libya, all combined. But they are not. They buy your oil because they need the oil. Why not? They will not conflict with technology. They are living with only IP, intellectual properties. They are living with only capital properties, human resources. That is what the country builds on. It is a service nation. You have the mineral resources. You have become just a normal custodian of the mineral resources without knowing the use of it. So if you sit back and put your hand on, the air, in, 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 on your head and throw your hands in despair that France is instructing you, you must be a crazy president. You must be a stupid president, I'm sorry. It is just a matter that because you don't love yourself, no Western government had ever picked a bag and a bank billion car come to Africa and collected our money from the central bank and drove away with it, no. We rather packed our money and go and open an account and deposit the money in. So if you collect a loan from European Union, from IMF, from, from World Bank, and then the loan in transit, you give 60% diverted into your private account, they will thank you for that. They will run your money and there's no interest. You are happy with that. They call it your life in, in investment. However, you still burden your country, the generations on born to come and pay that debt. You will die and will be paying that money. That your money to you will die, you will not have it. So in that order, is this stupidity? Is it cleverness? Is it intelligence or what? Tell me what any of these presidents, what they have not studied with the Western presidents. Good number of them lecture them. Good number of the French African president today, they lecture some of these European presidents because they are far older than them. They've scholarized, learned, schooled more than them. They've thought their father, they thought their mother. And yet you make sometimes very young boys instruct you when you see them, they will be shaken because they are coming with a force. They are coming with a power. They are coming with a mentality that they want to secure very important things for their citizen, education for their citizen. They mm -hmm. want to secure social security. They want to make sure that pregnant women can serve a relief, stay at home and nurture kids. And on top, they pay them. Tell me one single country in Africa, except when Libya Gaddafi was alive, that they pay maternity leave to that extent or pay, uh, as Germans would call it, a Tion's guilt. Do they pay anywhere in Africa? No, we don't. But where does the money go? They wouldn't be able to tell you. And then always, they are always borrowing. All of them, they borrow. But I have ask, ask a simple question that, when will Sierra Leone borrow money to Guinea? When will Ghana borrow money to Nigeria? When will Nigeria borrow money to Guinea? When will Nigeria borrow money to Benin? And when will Benin borrow money to, gain, uh, to, to Togo? We don't give our money to even ourselves. We don't borrow money to ourselves. All of us, 56 presidents, we queue up, put on tie, and then we go and borrow and bring it back home. And yet, yeah, you're having the money. So any, the history and the coup d'etat, for me, I've seen coup. I've seen coup d'etat. I've seen civil unrest. I've seen genocide, Sierra Leone genocide that lived in it throughout. I've seen the Liberian genocide. I've seen the Angolan genocide, uh, 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 Jonas Savimbi. I've seen genocide in Rwanda, and I've seen genocide of other places. So I know what it is. At the end of the day, let's come out and ask ourselves, Paul Kagame, he was a, he was a, he was a, he was a military leader. How long has he stayed in power? You and I, an African president are making references of Kagame. But, but he is a person who came from also military background. He's a person who came from rebellion background. He came from also terrorism background. He came from the bush. And then also now. But he tries at least. He's building a model of a government, a model of a country, building his economy. So indeed, Rwandese opposition, it is not that Kagame is strong. That is intimidating opposition. Yes, some part you can say yes. However, however, 
one would say, and when you're in, in, in Rwanda, you can say that something is going on in the country. Mm -hmm. There is a sense and there is a direction. Mm -hmm. That I'm saying that it has nothing to do with how long the president stays in power, but how he uses the power and what he does for his people. Correct. So that election for four years, four years, yes, indeed, we need it. But it's completely nonsense if even it's one day and you make abusive use of it. It is equally as worse when you stay 10 years in power. So stay longer and make good things for your people and we'll be quiet.